Well, it looks like the Brewers, Cubs, and Cardinals are going to have some competition in 2020 because the Reds are just getting better every day. And he drives it into right center field. Hit a ton. This baby is way back. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball channel. And today, the Cincinnati Reds have added yet another piece, another upgrade to that roster. And they're trying to compete in 2020. There is no doubt about it, as they have added outfielder Nicholas Castellanos on a four-year deal. And we got to get into the details of this deal. This is a really good player to add to a team that's already pretty damn stacked as far as power, as far as good hitters. They got a great rotation. They got a decent bullpen and the Cincinnati Reds are coming to play in 2020. There ain't no doubt about it. Castellanos is coming over on a four-year deal worth $64 million. This is a guy who has somewhat questionable defense, but he can obviously hit. Last year, in just 212 at-bats with the Cubs, he knocked out 16 bombs and hit 321. And the guy was pretty good for many years with the Tigers. He'd hit you around between 270 and 300, typically with about 20 to 27 home runs. But keep in mind, he played at Comerica Park, which is where home runs go to die. They got that 420-foot center field, so... You can assume he's going to hit you more, possibly 30 plus at Great America Ballpark, possibly 30 to 35 plus home runs could come from Nick Castellanos' bat. So keep that in mind. I actually had him on my list of most overrated players because I felt like this off season, it was like Castellanos, Castellanos, because he was one of the few outfield free agents still available. So I think that teams were acting like he was just this greatest guy ever. I don't think he is, but I do think he is a good ball player. Don't get me wrong. And the Reds, they have so much already that when when you add him into the mix, this is a team that really does look good all around. I already mentioned Castellanos might bring you 30 plus home runs. And you also got Aquino out in right. He hit 19 home runs in just 205 at bats. Imagine over a 500 at bat season. And of course, Moustakas, who came over earlier in the off season, he's gonna hit you at least 35 home runs. This guy's an absolute beast. And then, of course, you have to mention Eugenio Suarez over at third. He only hit 49 bombs last year, 271 average, 358 on base. He is going to be huge for the Reds in 2020. And I mentioned Akiyama, who came over. He has three straight seasons of at least 20 home runs in Japan. During the last three years, he hit 322, 323, and 303, respectively. So constantly over 300 with over 20 homers. Doesn't mean that's going to translate to the major leagues, but you do have some potential. You got a great leadoff hitter. Guy knows how to put the ball in play. So Akiyama, I think a very solid pickup for the Reds. And of course, maybe their most famous name, who I have not even mentioned yet, is Joey Votto. And yeah, he's not as good as he used to be, but Votto is going to be a veteran presence. He's got a 307 career average. Still good. He'll hit you. 15 bombs at least and he's going to be a solid addition to a lineup that is really looking good and if we take a look at a possible lineup for 2020 this is just one i put together it doesn't mean this is going to be it but you can see akiyama in center field vado at first suarez at third base hitting you almost 50 or 50 plus bombs mustakas going to be playing second base but he's versatile he can also play third but he's going to knock you a bunch of home runs and now castellanos the new pickup even more power a nice bat there aquino out and right we don't know if he's going to have as good of a season as he had last year which wasn't a full season but man if he can hit like that over a full year look for a Kino out and right. Right now, not sure who's going to play short. They had Freddie Galvis, but Freddie Galvis might be better as a kind of a super utility guy, or he might even get traded. So right now, Senzel, who played outfield last year, but he can also play infield. Senzel could be an option at short. Not sure how they're going to handle that. But behind the plate, Barnhart will probably be your opening day catcher. But don't forget about Tyler Stevenson, who is on the fast track in the minor leagues, and he'll probably make his major league debut in 2020. And you never know, he could be their starting catcher if the you know, he continues to play well, and it also depends on how Barnhart plays. And you got some pretty decent backups, including the very versatile Kyle Farmer. He can play you third, he can play you second, he can play you behind the plate, he can play you outfield. So they got a lot of versatility in the lineup. They got a lot of options, and I haven't even mentioned all the outfielders that'll be in camp because, you know, I don't have all day. They have a ton of outfielders, but I did mention the main guys who I think have the biggest chance to make the team and be in the lineup. And I've talked about the Reds before, and they really are in a prime position to compete, even though there are a lot of good teams in that NL Central with the Cubs, obviously, the Cardinals, the Brewers, 
But you know what? With those two wild card teams, the Reds are really in a good position to hang in there throughout the year. And if they can make a push, if they can stay healthy and these guys contribute like they should, they're going to be in a, in a good position to at least win a wild card and maybe compete for that NL Central crown. And the thing that really I like about the Reds is that rotation. Man, that rotation, if they stay healthy, it is solid. One to five, a nice rotation. And you can see, I mean, pretty much this is probably what it's going to be with Luis Castillo, solid ace right there. He was 15 and eight with a 3.4 ERA, 226 strikeouts in only 190 innings. Sonny Gray is a big name, 11 and eight last year, 2.87 ERA. Again, 205 strikeouts in 175 innings. Strikeout machines throughout the rotation. Trevor Bauer, he struck out 253 and only 213. Former All Star, his record wasn't great with 11 and 13, 4.48 ERA. But Trevor Bauer is Trevor Bauer. He could have a better year, but even if he doesn't, he's still going to strike out a ton of guys. And with that offensive production, his record should be a lot better than 11 and 13. And then you got Anthony DiSclafani and Wade Miley to round out the rotation. Very solid. Wade Miley, a number five guy, that's what you kind of want in a rotation. You don't want a guy like Wade Miley being your number one. You want him being your number four or five, and that's how they got it. And if they need help, they got other guys who can start out of the bullpen or out of the minors. They got guys like Tyler Malley, who had 25 starts last year. He also strikes out a lot of guys, 129 strikeouts in 129 innings. He gave up a lot of runs with a 5.14 ERA. But again, that's not even a guy who you're probably going to have in your main rotation. It's just someone who can do some spot starts and fill in if needed. And you got Rysel Iglesias coming out to close games. Hopefully he has a bounce back year. He did not look great last year. You got Michael Lorenzen in the bullpen two-way player he can also hit he can play you some outfield if needed you talk about versatility but he comes out of the bullpen in 83 innings with a 2.92 era last year and 85 strikeouts and amir garrett is another guy out of the bullpen who's pretty good 3.21 era 78 strikeouts in 56 they got just a ton of strikeout machines they got i mean if you strike out more guys than innings pitched especially with a pretty big sample size it means you got legit stuff and just up and down their rotation and throughout their bullpen they got legit stuff it doesn't mean they don't give up runs and maybe walk a few guys more guys than they should but you got to look at their offensive production as well it's going to make up for a lot of that the reds are a well-rounded team they could probably use another piece or two in that bullpen which they're probably going to try to work out but then again spring training hasn't started yet we don't know who's going to make the team there's so many pitchers in that bullpen who can possibly be in the bullpen on opening day i can't go through them all because I don't want the video to be too long, but just to just say they got options there and they have a really nice rotation, but I love the lineup as well. I mean, now when you add this guy, Nicholas Castellanos, to that outfield, they're pretty legit from one to eight. I mean, at catcher, okay, Barnhart might not be your favorite option, but even there, they got someone coming through the minors who's about big league ready in Tyler Stevenson. So the Reds got pretty much everything covered from A to Z, and they're ready to go into 2020 to compete and to try to win at least a wild card spot, if not a National League Central Championship. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I know it's been a few days since I made a video. I have not been feeling good, been feeling kind of sick. And then yesterday, felt really sick after the terrible news drops about Kobe Bryant and his daughter losing their lives along with seven others in a helicopter crash and it was just terrible i just hoped it it was a dream i hoped i'd wake up this morning and that didn't really happen but it did and when you you know somebody who's such an icon he's such a hero to so many and to read that is just uh, it's just it's, it's unbelievable it's hard to even accept that that really happened and i don't know what to say about it just um it was just really felt terrible about it and I, I didn't think anything i had to say about baseball was very relevant yesterday because that event i mean it transcended sports it was the story of the day so i just took a day off yesterday but i'm back today to talk baseball talking cincinnati reds Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant and his daughter and those seven others who perished and will be thinking about their families. Hopefully they get through this okay. Thanks again for joining me right here on the Hum Baby Baseball channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you don't mind. I really do appreciate it. We're going to be talking more baseball throughout the offseason, getting ready for 2020 as the Cincinnati Reds continue to improve. They are looking great, but we're going to also be talking a lot of San Francisco Giants as we get ready for 2020 at Oracle Park. I can't wait. Y'all have a great day. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Check out the links in the description. We'll talk to you next time. See ya! When the Giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. Every time the chips are down, it's
Bye-bye, baby History's in the making